So next we have Holly, uh, also from San Antonio, and she'll present uh, her acceptance uh, experience with the agility from Electa. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, I am actually not completely responsible for the acceptance and commissioning. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student, so um, all of the acceptance and commissioning was performed by our residents and our physicists. Um, so I can try to answer your questions as best as I can. Um, uh, so quick dis disclosure, conflict of interest. Um, at San Antonio, we have been supported by both PTW and ELECTA. So. Um, so in our clinic, we have recently commissioned two new Versa HDs. Um, we've had a Versa HD for about four years now that we've been using. Um, and for anyone who's not familiar with a Versa, it's capable of photon energies of 6 MV, 10 MV, and 18, as well as flattening filter-free energies of 6 and 10 MV. Um, it has a capable of electron energies of 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, and 15 MeV. And um, as Vance mentioned earlier, uh, it contains the agility collimator, which is actually defined by a pair of sculpted diaphragms that are mounted perpendicularly to the MLCs. And the MLCs actually replace a backup draw, um, and it consists of 80 leaf pairs. And so I'll be talking a little bit about um, our experience using the beam scan and what ultimately makes beam scan an ideal choice for acceptance and commissioning, um, some of that being the automated setup, which Ara briefly mentioned. Um, as well as the ability to fast, uh, quickly, and accurately collect your beam data, um, and also some of the advanced processing options that exist. Um, so all of our acceptance tests were performed in accordance with uh, Electra's Medical Linear Accelerator Customer Acceptance Test Manual. Um, measurements for our flattened photon beams for the 6, 10, and 18 MV energies were taken at 100 cm SSD at 10 cm depth and 10 by 10 and 30 by 30 field sizes. Um, and Electa defines that synergy, or excuse me, uh, symmetry should not exceed 103% uh, and uh, field flatness should be within 106%. Um, so here are our results. Um, the GT axis refers to the in-plane, uh, AB refers to cross-plane, and TAGB and GATB refer to the diagonal axes. Um, and we were generally well within our tolerance. Um, the only time where we kind of exceeded that, I don't know if I have a pointer here, but for the cross-plane axis, um, we were at 106.6%, um, but we were still very close, so we were able to accept it. Um, we also accepted and commissioned um, just the 6 MV flattening filter-free energy. Um, our existing Versa has is capable of the 10 MV flat and filter free, but um, for our two new ones, we just did the six. Um, and these measurements were taken at 90 CM SSD uh, at a depth of 10 CM for both the 10 by 10 and 30 by 30 field sizes. Um, and Electa defines symmetry for flattening filter free beams as the maximum ratio of the absorbed dose measured at equidistant points from the central axis up to 80% of the field size. And all of these should be within 103%. And they also define the relative dose as a ratio of some given point to the dose at the beam axis. Um, so here are some of our results for the uniformity test for the 6MV uh, triple F beams. Um, and for all of these, we were well within that 103% tolerance. Um, and here are some of the results from the nominal relative dose tolerances. Um, again, we were well within our tolerance for all of these. So uh, we also accepted and commissioned the electron energies. Um, so all of these measurements were taken at 100 CM SSD for a 25 by 25 field uh, at a depth of R85 over two. Um, and all of these needed to be within plus or minus 5% for the flatness and symmetry. And again, uh, we were well within those ranges. So we were able to successfully accept our verses. Um, so we commissioned uh, these new machines both for our clinically used pinnacle treatment planning system um, as well as our Monaco treatment planning system. So I'm just going to touch on a few of the requirements um, for Monaco. So all of our photon measurements were performed at 90 cm SSD and our PDDs and output factors were taken for field sizes of 1 by 1, 
up to 40 by 40, which is the maximum field size. And our, all of our output factors were normalized to one for a 10 by 10 field. Um, our in-plane and cross-plane profile scans were taken from two by two up to the largest field size of 40 by 40. And it was taken at depths of Dmax, 5, 10, and 20 centimeters. Uh, we determined absolute dose both at 90 and 100 cm SSD for a 10 by 10 field at 10 cm depth. And some of the additional photon scans that were required were scans of both diagonals uh, at two different depths, um, star pattern scans, as well as determining the wedge transmission factors. And all of our electron measurements were taken at 100 cm SSD, and then PDDs were measured five to 10 centimeters beyond their practical range, and were taken to at least a half cm above the water surface. So overall, all of this was um, within the requirements of the Monaco beam data requirements. Um, so we commissioned our two new Linux to be within a 0.5% tolerance, plus or minus, of our existing Versa HD. Um, so for any of the upcoming slides, uh, the new Versa is represented by the solid line, and the existing Versa is with a dashed line. Um, so these are our photon profiles for uh, 10 by 10 fields at 90 sim SSD. And um, as you can see, we were well within the tolerance. Um, we were able to get very precise and accurate measurements here. Um, and here are the profiles from the photons for 6MV, 6MV triple F, um, 10 and 18MV as well. And again, um, you can't really even see a difference between the old Versa and our new ones. Um, we were all very accurate. And finally, the results from our output factor test. Um, generally, for the smaller field sizes, we were very close, if not spot on. Um, but for our larger field sizes, we deviated slightly from uh, the existing LINAC, but we were still well within that 5.5% tolerance. So. Um, so here's the results from our electrons. Um, the only one where we saw some significant deviation was in the 15 MeV energies. Uh, but still, we were within our acceptance tolerance of 0.5%. And all of these shown are from a 10 by 10 fields. Um, so here are the profiles from the electrons. Um, these were taken for 6 by 6, 10 by 10, and 20 by 20 applicators, um, all at a depth of 0.5 <laughs> times the R90. Um, so I'd like to briefly talk a little bit about um, the acceptance and commissioning uh, using the beam scan. So we know that acceptance and commissioning can take weeks. It's a very long and arduous process. Um, but beam scan, as Ara showed, can really cut your time down by quite a bit, by 40%. Um, and you can still maintain those fast and accurate scans. Um, so some of the features that I'd like to touch on that um, make it an ideal choice for your acceptance and commissioning include the ease of setup. Um, this precise scans at a maximum speed, any of the advanced uh, beam data analysis and processing tools that exist, and um, finally, the capability to connect to the TrackIt software. Um, so BeamScan has that built-in Wi-Fi, um, which is really nice, so you can use your own smart device or that iPod Touch that comes with it, um, and it's a very, very easy setup. Um, it should take you ultimately less than 15 minutes, um, and we tested that quite a bit. It usually never took us more than 15 minutes whenever we were doing any scans. Um, some feature, a feature that I really like is the TrueFix SSD tool that's um, pictured at the bottom. So you can really accurately determine your zero position of your tank. Um, you just align to your SSD minus two. So if you're performing a scan at 100 cm SSD, um, you would just align the TrueFix tool to 98 cm, um, and that's a really nice feature, I think. Um, or I also mentioned the auto leveling, um, using these sensors that you see on the top right, um, and that's also a really great feature, and it saves a lot of time. Um, so, most of our scans were taken using this um, continuous mode um, with speeds up to 20 millimeters per second. And we really don't see a significant difference, especially after applying some smoothing, um, doing some processing. Um, our scans are very, very accurate, um, and it really cuts back on a lot of time that's spent. Um, I also talked about the Q and task features. Um, that's really nice whenever you're commissioning for a certain treatment planning system. It really saves a lot of time and can prevent you from making any mistakes or taking multiple field sizes or forgetting to 
run a field size. Um, one factor or one option that we, I don't believe that our physicists use, but that exists, is the ability to use a table generator to create your output factors. Um, I personally haven't played around with this feature, but I know that it's there and it's a very nice feature to use. Um, and probably one of the best things about, uh, alongside the continuous measurement option, is the ability to have a reference curve. So we were matching to our existing versa, and using this reference curve overlay, you can put up that reference curve, and then as you're real time taking measurements, you can see, okay, I'm off, I should stop the scan and fix something. Um, so that's an excellent feature when you're doing beam matching. Um, additionally, there's an automatic water level check for evaporation control. Um, going back to beam matching, uh, you can superimpose scans and that allows you to detect any asymmetries that exist uh, between your profiles. So that's also a really good feature. Um, and smoothing and averaging data is awesome because, I mean, if you're taking these continuous scans, they might be a little bit more noisy than you would like, but um, with just a couple of clicks of a smoothing function, you have really awesome data. Um, so these functions and filters can help in your data analysis and preparing your data for export into a treatment planning system. Um, finally, BeamScan uh, has very easy connectivity to track it, um, and it can make your QA data management even easier. So um, after scanning and analyzing, um, your data can just be exported with a single click, which is a nice feature. So you can select your protocol template, um, for example, TG142 annual QA, and the report is automatically filled with this analyzed beam data. So this can greatly increase your efficiency in QA data management. So you can compare your commissioning data every year with your QA data. Um, so in conclusion, Acceptance and commissioning can often be a long and grueling task, but um, we've shown that beam scan is an ideal choice for your acceptance and commissioning measurements um, of some of its features, including the auto setup, um, its ability to quickly and accurately acquire beam data, um, as well as the advanced data analysis and processing features that exist. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank the physicists and residents at the Mace Cancer Center in UT Health San Antonio um, for taking all of this data and for helping me prepare these slides, um, as well as the CPRIT Research Training Award for supporting me and allowing me to be here. Um, so with that, I'll take any of your questions. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.